Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at exponential growth and decay. We're going to answer the question, how do I write an equation from an exponential growth or decay situation? So let's look at the growth and decay functions. You might recognize this one from eighth grade. It looks a little bit like the compound interest formula. And some of the variables are the same too. So A is that initial amount. And then R is the rate as the decimal, and then X is the time, which is usually in years. And exponential growth, we're going to use this equation whenever a quantity is exponentially increasing over time by a fixed rate or percent. So let's look at why we have to do this one plus R when it is growth. So remember, R is the rate as a decimal. So if we have something that grows by 3%, if we were just to use 0 0.03 as the decimal there, then B would be less than one. This number being raised to the exponent would be less than one, which would not work because growth has to have a B greater than one. So if we're growing by 3%, the way that we're gonna make sure that that B value is greater than one is by adding it to one. So we would do one plus 0 0.03 and get 1.03, and that would be the B value that you use. Okay, let's look at decay. The variables all mean the same thing. A is the initial amount, R is the rate as a decimal, and then X is the time, usually in years. Exponential decay occurs when a quantity exponentially decreases over time by a fixed rate or percent. So if you notice with decay, we subtract from one. So let's look at why. If we have something that is decreasing by 3%, if we just used 0 0.03 for our B value, it would be decay. But that is decaying too quickly because this is saying we are 3% of what we were. This would be like decreasing by 97% each time. That's not what we want. We just want to decrease by 3%. So the way that we decrease by 3% is by doing 1 minus 0 0.03 which is 0.97. This makes much more sense because that is only decreasing by 3%. We are 97% of what we were before. So that is why we have one plus the rate for growth and one minus the rate for decay. So now let's look at a few different situations and see if we can write functions for these. The first one says Anthony buys a fancy new electric car for $50,000. The car depreciates 10% each year. Use an exponential function to find the value of the car in seven years. So we are depreciating, which is decay. So I'm gonna use the decay formula, which is y equals a times one minus r to the x. Okay, and let's start with A, the initial value. It looks like Anthony initially purchased it for $50,000. So that's going to be the A value, 50,000. Okay, then the rate, it says that we are depreciating by 10%. So the way that we're going to get the correct rate is by doing one minus the rate as a decimal and 10% as a decimal, remember we move the decimal back twice, is 0.1. And one minus 0.1 is 0.9. So our rate is 0.9. So then that means that our function is y equals 50,000 times 0.9 to the X. And then to find the value in seven years, I will just substitute in seven for X. So I will do 50,000 times 0.9 to the seventh. So 50,000 times 0.9 to the seventh is 23,000 914 dollars and 0.845, so 85 cents. Okay, let's look at number two. Lena's uncle invests $1,800 when she is born for a future 18th birthday present. The value increases by 9% each year. Use an exponential growth function to find the value of the investment on Lena's 18th birthday. So it tells us that it's exponential growth and it also tells us that this 
investment is increasing. So we are going to use the growth formula, which is y equals a times one plus r to the x. So a is the initial value, which would be how much he, her uncle invests when she is born, which is $1,800. And then the rate, it says that we increase by 9%. So to find the actual value that we're going to use for the B value, we're going to do 1 plus 0 0.09, which is 1.09. So now I can write my function since I have the A value and the B value. It'll be Y equals 1,800 times 1.09 to the x. And then to find the value in 18 years, I'm just gonna substitute in 18 for x. So I will do 1,800 times 1 1.09 to the 18. So 1,800 times 1 1.09 to the 18 is 8,000 $490 and 82 cents is what that would round to. All right, let's look at number three. In 2012, Emily started a new company with 18 employees. The number of employees increased 25% per year after 2012. Use an exponential function to determine the number of employees at the company in 2022. So this would be a growth function since it says that her employees increased. So the formula for that is y equals a times one plus the rate to the x. So the initial value would be when she started in 2012, which was 18 employees. And then the rate, it says we are increasing 25%. Increasing 25%. So that's why we're gonna have to do one plus the rate. So one plus 0.25 is 1.25. So then our function is y equals 18 for the initial value times 1.25 to the x. Okay, and the last thing that they want us to do is determine the number of employees in 2012. So remember, or in 2022, remember 18 was the number of employees in 2012. So that's kind of where X is zero since that's our initial value. 2022 is 10 years after 2012. So we're gonna substitute in X equals 10 into our function to determine how many employees they'll have 10 years later in 2022. So we're gonna do 18 times 1.25 to the 10th. and we get 167.634 employees. I'm gonna round that to 168 because you're not gonna have a partial employee. Okay, and last one, number four. Nia buys a new iPhone 13 for $1,000. The value of an iPhone depreciates 41% each year. Write a function and use it to determine the value of the iPhone in four years. So it says that this iPhone is depreciating. So that means that our formula is going to be exponential decay, which is Y equals A times one minus R to the X. So A is the initial value and it says that she bought it for $1,000. So that is the A value. And then the rate, it tells us that the iPhone depreciates 41% each year. So it depreciates 41%. So to determine what we're gonna use for the B value, I'm gonna do one minus 41% as a decimal, which is 0.41. And one minus 0.41 is 0 0.59. So our function is Y equals 
1,000 times 0 0.59 to the x. And it wants us to determine of the iPhone after four years, so I'm going to substitute in four for x. So to figure out the price after four years, I'll do 1,000 times 0 0.59 to the fourth. And 1,000 times 0 0.59 to the fourth is $121.17.